Hello, thank you so much for clicking on this video, another episode of Blooms for You. And no, I'm not going to dedicate another little bloom of my Neo Stylies Loose Neary's Blue because I don't have two to give away. And yeah, everything is a little bit deformed on this orchid. And I hope that I can take care of it and see if I can get that out of its system at some point. But I did want to show you anyway that on another spike we have another single bloom. And it could also happen to this one. One spike, deformed, single bloom. Welcome, thank you so much however for joining me. Let's go and see what else is in bloom at the moment. Wouldn't you agree with me that these are exquisite blossoms? This is Lelia lundii. Let me pan out a bit. I've got three exquisite blossoms on my Lelia lundii. Just so happens that exquisite blossoms, these are dedicated to you. For a while now, there has been some interaction between you and myself, for which I want to say thank you very, very much. I hope that you are doing well. I haven't seen you for a while. I hope that your orchids are doing well. But I would like to dedicate my three little, cute, gorgeous, exquisite Lundii blossoms to you, exquisite blossoms. That really fits, I would say. They are super small, but now they've been open 10 days. So they're still very, very fresh looking, very long lasting. And now that the weather has warmed up a little bit, I detect a fragrance as well as one little bit of scale. So I'm not going to waste time. I shall address it straight away. This is not happening. Not on my Lundii. Now that she has established herself so well in the pot, we'll take care of that one. Sas Sahibi. And then let's give her a little bit of a spin, just to double check all eyes on Lundii and see if we find another one because no way is this going to become a scale magnet. I can only see one. I can only see one. She's a bit of a climber and we're gonna have to address that at some point this year. Having said that, she is absolutely gorgeous. Cute and gorgeous. I don't know what I see here, whether it's just the sheath or the stem. Doesn't hurt to give it a little bit of a once over with some alcohol. Never had any pest issues with this orchid. So this comes as a surprise but we're definitely not going to tolerate them. Absolutely not. Especially now that she's really come onto her own. These blooms, they are cute. And yes, they are fragrant. And they have like a honey molasses fragrance to them with a, head, a, a small hint of something medicinal. I would like to say, I mean, peppermint is too harsh, but it, there's sort of something in the, in the background, a note of some sort that has it just reminds me of something medicinal. It's like a child's medicine that they have to take orally. And in order for them to take that medicine, it has to be somewhat sweet, but there's still that hint of something there that could be unpleasant. So exquisite blossoms, my little Lelia Lundii. She blooms for you. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I, I hope that you are doing well. So supposedly here is my Vanda Green Hopper. But Chikasena, I know that the orchid doesn't look the part. It's not snazzy, clean and perfect and pristine, but these blooms are so cute. And I would like to say thank you to you via my Vanda Green Hopper blooms. I would like to also address uh, Michael McCarthy and say thank you very much for the possible true identification of this orchid. 
possibly the cross between Vanda Lamalata and Rhynchostylus gigantea. Hardly surprising when I saw what the roots do for me on this orchid. I am not surprised that it has some kind of Rhynchostylus in it. In my climate, I just cannot, cannot get Rhynchostylus roots to grow. This orchid actually lives in permanent water culture. I never take it out of the pot except for now. I had to position it in such a way, Chica Sena, to show you the blooms and let you know that, well, I know the orchid doesn't look the best, but the blooms, they are very, very cute. They have a very chemical fragrance. It's a little bit sweet, but there's, it, it's very chemical. It's um, something like an air freshener gone wrong. Not unpleasant, but thank goodness not that strong either. You really have to go in and try and smell it. And then you can detect that there is a fragrance. But it has sort of the, like something pharmaceutical, something akin to that. I can't be quite so specific about the fragrance, but needless to say, it's a little bit like, mm, yeah, not, not something I would try to always stick my nose in. For example, like uh, Phalaenopsis aurora that I have. <laughs> but she is very, very cute nonetheless. She's at least trying to grow in my collection. I'm going to just get the pot of water and show you what she would normally look like like that, so you can see the problem I have with showing the blooms on camera. <laughs> They're sort of facing down a little bit. I only also just got two blooms, which is a shame, but you can see that the orchid is still trying to recover and fight off something that she came with. Um, trying very hard to treat her and keep her clean. I can't say what it is. I'm getting some new leaves in the middle, which is, which is a good sign, but we have to, get more concerned about the fact that all these spots should not be repeating themselves. So she lives in this tub. Today she's getting some seaweed and some regular fertilizer at about 300 parts per million. So that uh, she is always, always submerged in water and I cannot get the roots to grow. Every time a root grows, it stops. She lives inside at the moment because she's a warm to hot grower and you can see how much humidity she has around her and still the roots stop. Yes, it's very frustrating. Having said that, I am very, very pleased that she did eventually bloom. I was curious about whether this orchid is worth keeping and worth fighting for. And for now, she's not in the way and I will continue to fight for her. Chica Sena, thank you so very, very much for your support. I hope that everything is going well in your part of the world. I appreciate having you here. Beautiful, remarkable, different. That's three descriptions that I have for this orchid as I have three blooms on what I am guessing is a Paphiopedalum American hybrid, I am going to dedicate these blooms to P.W. Cheng, David Roberts, and Peter Fotopoulos. Thank you, gentlemen, all three of you very much for your very, very early support on my channel. I really appreciate the fact that you took the time to take my channel into consideration and interact with me. So I would like to also address the fact that, I don't know, P.W. Chung, I haven't seen you for a while. The last time we met, met, so to speak, was when I was doing the scrubby pads last year in uh, spring, summer, and you liked the idea. So I hope that you have been able to see all the videos, how it's evolving, how things are growing on this media, now Orchid Media. But I was very happy to see you on that video and appreciate it very much that you were also interested of using scrubby pads with regards to growing orchids. So I do hope that you're doing well. Thank you, P.W. Chung, very much. David Roberts, hi. How are you? How is everything going down the road from me, so to speak? Really appreciated your heads up about the top layer with regards to the orchid room. We had a wonderful little exchange there. 
And I don't know if you've seen recent videos of mine that I'm trying to address it with something that I do have available locally, this dry top layer that we were discussing, and uh, that I'm actually venturing towards using Akadama as a possible option to keep the humidity on the surface of my LECA a little bit more high in comparison to what I have right now. So David Roberts, sincerely hope that everything is okay. Yonder, your side down the road there, I really, really appreciate it. I also appreciate the fact that you wanted to help me and point me in the right direction. And it just so happens, the Orchid Room and I are in full contact, yeah. Lovely, lovely lady. So very, very much appreciated that you left a comment like that on that video where I was talking about my lecker. And Peter Fotopoulos, I'm very, very sorry. I actually don't have a comment that I can reference, but your name is on my list. So somewhere, somewhere down the line, you showed up, which is really, really greatly appreciated. Now this is the third bloom and it is a little bit more of a recent opener. But nonetheless, I just wanted to kind of see if I can zoom in a little bit so we can see that bloom. Because as much as I love spotting, the fact that I got this version of an American hybrid just absolutely pleases me. The hood, the cap is a velvet. And then this waxy structure outside, but what's even more remarkable is the inside. I just want to boop that little yellow point there. I don't know what it is, what purpose it serves. This orchid is not fragrant. Not to me anyway, but maybe to a pollinator. Stunning, stunning what's going on in that bloom. That, that is fascinating. And I honestly thought that in the early days, it would actually kind of disappear, that it was only some kind of a trait the orchid has for the first few days, and then as the blooms age, they might lose that. But nope, look at that. Still there. Oh, these are gorgeous. Let me get back a little bit. And they're quite big as well. I waited to make this video so I have all three blooms open. And the first blooms are open now about two and a half weeks. And they still look as good as new. Incredible. This hood is the contrast in this hood. It's, that is just, I call it a hood. It's probably the sepal. I should be a little bit more specific. But the contrast and that velvety, velvety texture that it has. And then it goes to this waxiness down there. I find them quite pretty. There is so much interest in these blooms. Incredible. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. P.W. Chung, David Roberts, and Peter Fotopoulos. Thank you ever so much. I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. A great start to 2021. Okay, so east side it is then. <laughs> I've been around the west side, south side in full sun, up against the hedge with this orchid. I don't know how to present it, but at least here on the east side, I'm getting the true colors. And before I get going with regards to my Catlia Cernua, or as I still like to call her Sophronite Cernua, I want to point out that I have the last three spikes open for Flaunted Natural, Lisa New Zealand, and Divyasri Food and Beauty. So ladies, if you are watching this, please, please let me know because this, I have three more spikes open for you to say thank you so very, very much for being on my channel. And um, yeah, uh, on the top there, the blooms are going. So we'll just get rid of that for the time being, just to tidy up a bit. So that takes down five. So from 30 blooms in total that were open at the same time, we are now down to 25. 
Then I have another spike in the back here that's not looking so good. Let's see. There was four blooms on that. So now we are down to 21 blooms. But still, still, this is more than I had last year. Let's take this little bloom off right here as well. It's already going down. So let's bring that down to 20. <laughs> I am normally not one to cut off old blooms, but when it comes to blooms for you, I want to make sure that the orchid is somewhat presentable as best as I can being a hobby grower. So, flaunted natural. You showed up on my Sophronites care video and I waited so that you could have a Sophronites bloom spike dedicated to you as a thank you very, very much. And then Lisa New Zealand and Divyasu Food and Beauty you were at my Blooms For You episode 12. Thank you. Guess what? This Blooms For You episode is with your name in it. And let me just show you that we have this spike that's just opened. I'm still pending a bud. This little spike back here also just opened. And there's this one right there that is also just open. So those are the three for you ladies. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel and my Sophronite Senua, three last spikes of the season, they bloomed for you. I love this little orchid. It's almost like I want to stay and just hold on and look at how pretty she is. There is no fragrance, but I always say when you've got colors like this going, you sort of wonder, does there have to be a fragrance? Anyway, ladies, Flaunted Natural, Lisa New Zealand, Divyasri, Food and Beauty. Your support is so much appreciated. You have no idea. I really do appreciate it. Like ice in the sunshine, yeah. <laughs> like ice in the sunshine. Oh, hello. Look at the size of King. Oh my goodness. He's got a bowl of water. No, it's got to be that, right? Cousin It, hello. Are you having a good time? You're loving it, aren't you? This is what's going on at the moment here. At the moment, I'm losing some leaves from Cousin It, and I try to pull and see if they come off. And like a baboon, checking the fleas of my pets and picking them off, I go around and look for old blooms that are spent and pick them out. It's a little bit of therapy. I'm not sure how he feels about it, it must hurt, like when we pull our hair out with follicle by follicle. <laughs> but yeah, just to make sure that there's nothing happening with regards to too much humidity or something decaying inside of him there, I go around and start weeding out the dead blooms. We still have a few more weeks of this beautiful spectacle. Yep, I'm talking about you. Still have a few more weeks to go. But everybody, I would like to say thank you to all of you that have watched this video, that are supporting my channel by clicking on the videos, giving them a like. I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you so very much. And I know Cousin It appreciates it as well because without the channel, he would never ever have gotten into the limelight. Thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. Cousin It still blooms for everybody that was not mentioned today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.